it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm here with Neat and Tangled featuring a fun recessed panel and Distress Ink watercoloring. I'm going to be using the new Succulents Journaling Card Stamp Set and also the Coordinating Dies. These just came out this past month and I really love how this card allows you to create such fun and easy cards really quickly. I'm going to be pairing this up with the Bible Journaling Stamp Set. This has a lot of really great words in it. I'm going to be using the word love today and I'll be pairing it up with this succulent journaling card. I love all the different sentiments that are included in this card. However, I didn't feel like they matched with the style of card that I wanted to do. Plus I wanted to do some masking to add that love word into this journaling card. So I needed to have a smaller sentiment. So here I'm lining up the journaling card with the word love to get the placement right. This is some watercolor paper, Strathmore Bristol Smooth watercolor paper. I'm going to pick the lo word love up with my Misty stamping tool and I'm going to start prepping the surface of my paper with an EK Success powder tool. This powder tool really helps in keeping down the static cling that you might have on your paper which embossing powder often sticks to. I'm going to stamp my sentiment in the Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink. I love this ink to do my embossed stamping because the ink is really juicy and it holds the embossing powder so well. I'm heat setting this in some white embossing powder from Ranger using my Wagner heat gun to go ahead and melt the powder. When you're heating your paper, I often find it helpful to go ahead and heat the backside as you're melting the embossing powder. That just helps cut down on any warping. I also stamped the word love on a piece of sticky note and I'm just going to trim around it very loosely just to create a simple mask. I don't need this to be perfect because I'm just trying to create an area around the word love. That way it doesn't get stamped over top of with the succulent card. I'm going to line this up right over top of the word love to make sure I get the placement right. And then I'll go ahead and pick this up with my Misty stamping tool as well. I'm going to be stamping this in the same Simon Says Stamp Clear ink because I'm going to heat emboss this with some white embossing powder as well. Just again, I'm going to prep the surface of my paper with the powder tool before I go ahead and stamp this down. Now I'm taking my heat tool once again and melting the white embossing powder that I've applied over top of the wet ink. I'll just go ahead and heat set this until I have all the embossing powder completely melted. For my watercoloring, I'm going to be using a variety of distress inks here. I've got Evergreen Bow, Seedless Preserves, Tattered Rose, Bundled Sage, Ice Spruce, Ripe Persimmon, Dried Marigold, and Fired Brick. I'm going to be using all of these colors today to do my watercoloring. I'm going to be smushing them onto a makeshift palette that I've created using a page protector and a piece of white cardstock inserted in between. This palette allows me to see all the colors in their true form. That way I know as I'm picking up the colors which one is which. If I had stamped this down onto something a little darker or if I had just stamped down onto the page protector without the paper inside of it, you wouldn't have been able to really see the color very well. But having that paper inside the page protector allows me to really see these colors in the true format and helps me as I'm watercoloring knowing which colors I'm picking up. So I'll go ahead and set that aside and start working on my coloring. What I'm doing here is I'm just adding areas of color along all the different petals, kind of blending the colors together and allowing the water to move the colors in the way that they want. In this particular instance, I liked how it turned out. If I was going to do this again, I would not have added so much of the darker color. I think the darker color started to overpower it a little too much. But that's one of the things about card making is that we're always learning new things. And I really encourage you to test things out like I'm doing here. This is an experiment for me to see how the Distress Inks react together to create new colors. And I also probably would have not added such darker colors to the background. The colors all match together well, it's a good color combination. But for this particular card, I think I would have changed things a little bit had I been redoing this card again. I'll go ahead and keep adding color to this panel. I did multiple layers of color, so that way I could get the color saturation that I was looking for and also create extra layers. Now this first layer of color that I applied down, I allowed it to air dry. And the reason I did this is because I want it to be fairly smooth. The next layers of color that I'm going to be adding, I'm going to heat set all of them. And that's because I want hard and soft edges, so I'm allowing the water to really pool up and then I'll use my heat gun to really heat set this and create some hard and soft edges that gives a little bit of variation to the coloring. I'm going to keep adding color until I'm happy with it. I went ahead and dried it and now I'm going to go ahead and take my distress sprayer and add water droplets. I'm going to cover this entire panel with the water droplets to get some nice texture. I let it sit for about a minute. This video is sped up quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and blot this dry with my rag and I'll go ahead and work on another layer of color. I'm going to add a little bit more green to the background because I felt it was getting a little too gray. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add some darker color. I'm using the evergreen bow and the bundled sage. I didn't add any more of the ice spruce. I didn't want to have this to be too gray. So I'll go ahead and add that in and I'll go ahead and heat set this. I'm making sure I use a lot of water because that's going to give me even harder edges. I'm going to add some more water splatters. And again, I let those sit for about a minute before I went ahead and lifted them back off with my rag. Now, again, I really like how this turned out. Yeah, I think it turned out really interesting. Um, again, like I said, I probably wouldn't have used so much of the darker color, especially in the background overall. I think the flowers turned out pretty good despite having some of the darker color in there. And I think that did add a little bit of contrast. But I think if I had done this again, I would change the color of the background and maybe not make it quite so dark. So I'll go ahead and heat set some splatters that I've applied down. I'm going to add another layer of color. I'm adding a little bit more brighter colors, trying to brighten up this flower a little bit more. I'm also adding in some of the darker colors in areas. And again, it's just kind of playing around with the color and allowing it to mix and blend and really just let the water and the paint do whatever it wants and really create some fun color and variation to this flower. So here's the finished panel. I'm going to go ahead and die cut this using the coordinating frame die that goes with the succulents journaling card die set. I'll go ahead and run this through my Big Shot machine. I'm now taking an ivory cardstock card base that I've created using some Simon Says stamp cardstock. I'm going to apply a new stencil from Neat and Tangled over top of the card and I'm going to start applying some ink using a brush. You can use stencil brushes to apply distress ink. In this particular case, this is not one of those clarity stencil brushes that are pretty popular right now. This is actually a makeup applicator and it works just as well. It's a really great way to apply the ink over top of the stencil in a very soft and very pastel format. I'm using tattered rose here because this of course is a very light color as it is. But it's going to be even lighter and I'm not going to have any really dark areas that you might end up getting with the Distress Ink Ink Blender tool. So I'm going to go ahead and keep applying this over top of the stencil until I have it completely covered. Then I'll go ahead and remove the stencil and you can see that gorgeous soft pattern that we have in the background. Because I was trying to get the, car, the feel of the card to have a little bit more of a variegated look, I allowed some areas to have darker colors than others. I'm going to die cut this card base using the same frame die that we used to die cut our watercolor panel. I'll run this through my Big Shot machine as well. And then I've opened it up and I'm applying foam tape along the back side of this frame. So on the front side is the stenciling that we did. And this is going to be the inside of the card. We're going to have our watercolor panel behind the front of our card base. So this is going to allow it to have a recessed window to look into the card. I need to have a backing piece to be able to both hide the foam tape and also the watercolor panel to give it a nice smooth back. But I also need a place to be able to attach my watercolor panel. So I'm applying a piece of white cardstock to the back side of the front of the card. Once I have that together, I'm going to go ahead and put ATG adhesive on the back side of my watercolor panel. And I'll go ahead and fit that into the little frame area of our card front. And I love the neat design of this recessed panel. I think it's something fun and different that you can do with your cards. And I encourage you to try it out in a variety of different ways because there are many different ways that you can use the recess technique in your card making. To finish this off, I've added a little bit of hemp to the top portion of this card. And I'm also adding some pearl colored sequins to the card. This is a fun sequin mix from Neat and Tangled. I have all that linked below in the video description and also over on the Neat and Tangled blog. So I'll go ahead and glue those down. And then my final finishing touch was that I felt it needed to have a little bit of gold. So I'm taking my Fine Tech Gold watercolors and I'm going to first add some splatters. I really love adding the look of splatters to cards. I think it really adds a nice finishing touch and really gives them a more artistic feel. So I'll go ahead and add the splatters and then I'm also going to go ahead and paint inside the word love to help it stand out just a little bit more and also give it that nice soft gold shimmer. So that's going to do it for me. I hope you've enjoyed and got some inspiration on using the succulents journaling card stamp set and the coordinating dies to create a fun recess panel as well as some ideas on how you can use your distress inks to really play around and come up with fun ways to be able to create some fun effects in your watercoloring. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and head on over to the Neat and Tangled blog where you can get more information on this card including still pictures and products used. If you enjoyed this video, here's another one you might enjoy featuring the Succulents journaling card stamp set. Please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you can connect with me on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, as well as my blog. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.